now that we know what conceptually the mass moment of inertia is, and we've defined it mathematically as follows, I'm going to show you how to calculate, how to use this integral to calculate the mass moment of inertia for two different rigid bodies. And the first one that we're going to cover is the uniform rod with negligible thickness, right? We discussed this in the prior video. So we have a rod here. This thickness here is so small that we're just going to approximate it as being zero, or we're going to ignore it. And then the length of this rod is L. So ultimately, we're going to use this integral to calculate the mass moment of inertia of this uniform rod. But to do that, we have to first put this equation into a form that's a bit more user friendly. And we're going to do that by exploiting the fact that the linear density of this rod is equal to m over l. So what is linear density? Dense, that's the density of a one-dimensional object, right? And so this rod here is an example of a 1D object. It doesn't have a depth because it's in 2D. And then we're saying that the thickness is negligible, so we don't have to consider it. So that brings it down to one dimension. And what this equation allows us to do is we can now write dm is equal to lambda or linear density times dl. And so what is dl? dl is an infinitesimally small uh, distance here, right? And so by multiplying that by this linear density, what we ultimately get is the mass of this little, little segment, or you could think of it as a little building block, right? And it turns out that this, this DL, that's actually equal to DR. So we can write that dm is equal to lambda, which I'm actually just going to write out now here is m over l dr. So I can write this integral as i equals the integral from r squared. I'm going to put the m over l outside here because it's not affected by the integral, it's just a constant, times dr. And this should look like an integral that you're very familiar with from uh, your intro to calc classes. So now let's use that to get our mass moment of inertia. So let's start by calculating the mass moment of inertia of our, our rod or our rigid body B about its center of mass. Right, so its center of mass is going to be is right here, dead smack in the middle of this rod. And so if you think about distances from the center of mass, we're going to start at this point here and here. So this is distance is negative L divided by 2 from the center of mass. And this distance here is L over 2. So our integral is going to go from negative L over 2 to L over 2. And we have our mass over L on the outside here. And we have R squared dr. And so this means that we have m, oops, m divided by l, right? And this integral is going to give us um, r to the third over r, and then we plug in these values here. So we're going to get l over 2 to the third over 3 minus negative L over 2 to the third divided by 3. And then we can rewrite that as ML squared over 24 plus ML squared over 24, which then gives us ML squared 
over 12. And so this is the mass moment of inertia of a uniform rod with negligible thickness about its center of mass. Now let's say we want to take the mass moment of inertia about one of its ends. So let's say about this, this point here, Q. Okay, so I'm going to write B about Q. So we can use the same formula. So we can put M over L. Now we have our integral. But now instead of integrating from negative 2, L over 2 to L over 2, we're actually going to integrate from 0 to L, right? So again, this is the distances from that uh, axis of rotation. So we got from 0 to L. 0 to L, R squared times dr. And then this is equal to m over l, l to the third over 3. And then this other term goes to 0. And so we can write this then as ml squared over 3. And so now you have the moment of inertia about its the rod's end or about point Q. Now, this is actually uh, one way that you can go about calculating the moment of inertia about some other point besides this uh, center of mass. You can actually use another formula, which is called the parallel axis theorem. This states that if you wanted to calculate the moment of inertia, so about an axis that is parallel to the axis of, defined by the center of mass, you can actually write the following. So here I have the moment of inertia about our center of mass, you just simply add m times r squared, where r is the distance between the, ax the two axes. So in this case, between the center of mass and the Point Q. All right, so let's just quickly write that out and actually show how you can arrive at the exact same answer. So in this case, we're going to end up with, so we'll write I B Q is equal to moment of inertia for our center of mass plus M. And now this R, so this distance here is equal to L over 2 squared. So that's going to give us ML squared over 12 plus ML squared over 4, which we can then write as ML squared 12 plus 3 ML squared over 4 oops, sorry, over 12, which then just gives us I, B, Q, right? The sum of this is 4, 4 over 12 is 1 over 3, so we end up with the exact same answer over 3. So if you already know what the moment of inertia about the center of mass is, you can find it about a another point quite easily. So either of these approaches, uh, just calculating it right from the formula or using the parallel axis theorem are valid ways of getting the mass moment of inertia about some point that's not the center of mass. So now let's go through another example rigid body and calculate its moment of inertia. So this I'm going to call the donut-like disk. 
so you can imagine that I have a disc, right? So this is a donut. So that's a hole in the middle. And this diameter, so the outer diameter, is equal to D. And this inter diameter here is equal to lowercase d. Now, unlike in the last example, if you actually look at it from the side view, you would see that this donut actually has a thickness. So thickness of t. So really, you can think of this as a, as a 3D object. Imagine it as like a, a cylinder with, a real, with some thickness and then a, a hole in the middle of it. And so to calculate the moment of inertia, right, again, we, have, we start with this same equation and then we're going to put it in a, into a user-friendly um, form. So now because we have a 3D object, we're going to use density as, as we usually know it. So density is equal to mass over volume, which means that we can write dm is equal to our density, again this character rho, times tiny piece of volume. We can actually take this dv term and we can expand that to be the following. So here we have rho, we can have our thickness, and then Let's actually refer to our image here, right? We now have some thickness times an area. So we can think of our area as, right, a little tiny piece in, I'll draw it in green here, in this direction, and then a little tiny piece in this direction here. So ultimately what you end up is this little tiny area with some thickness, right? So you can think of that as your dv. And so the dimensions of this here are going to be in this direction we have dr. And then in this direction here we have r d theta, which means that dv, coming back down to our equation here, is equal to t r d theta dr. And so we can plug this into the equation and what you should, into our integral here, and what you should note is, right, we have two terms, right? So we have a d theta and a dr. So we actually need to take a double integral. So it turns out, and again, we're going to calculate the, uh, start with calculating the mass moment of inertia with respect to center of mass, which is right at this center point here that's going to equal, so first, or we're gonna first integrate from zero to two pi, right? So let's just write this term out here. So um, rho t r d theta dr. So we're gonna first integrate from zero to two pi, and then we're gonna integrate um, here, we're actually gonna go from d over two so lowercase d over 2 to large d over 2. And that's going to make sure that, right, so r is only going to go from here to here, and we're going to exclude this piece, right, because it's a hole. Okay, and so now all we have to do is actually calculate 
uh, this integral. So it should actually just looking at it, it should be clear, right? So if we integrate first with respect to theta, right, there is no theta term. Uh, so this actually ends up being, right, we end up with 2 pi on the outside, and then we can write this as d over 2, lowercase d over 2. We have, again, our rho t r dr. Oops, and I'm so sorry, I forgot that we actually need to, we have this r squared term in here, and this is, brings us to r, uh, oops, to r to the third. Does that make sense? Right, so we took this this dm, which contained an r term, and we had to multiply that by the r squared. So sorry, I forgot about that. And so that gives us the following. And in fact, we can pull out the, uh, the rho and the t term, right, because they're constant, so rho and t. And so now we only have the integral of r to the third times dr. Again, this is one of those easy to calculate integrals. So we end up with two pi rho t multiplied by, so r to the third, that gives you r to the fourth over fourth. So we're gonna calculate that for d over two to fourth divided by four, or minus, ah, d over 2 to the 4th over 4. And then what you're left with is cb is equal to rho pi t over 32 times d to the 4th minus d to the 4th. And then this we can actually write out as i cp is equal to rho pi t over 32 d squared minus lowercase d squared d squared plus lowercase d squared. Now I wrote this in this form because it turns out that actually if you we want to write what the mass of this donut is, right? That's equal to rho times its volume. And so this is equal to m is equal to rho times volume for our, our cylinder with a hole in it. So that's going to be equal to pi t, and then we have r squared, which in our case is going to be, we end up with d over two squared minus little d over two squared, which then simplifies to m is equal to rho pi t over 4 d squared minus little d squared. And so you can see that we can actually take this term and simplify it and write now that i, so the moment of inertia about its center of mass, is equal to mass over 8 times d squared plus lowercase d squared. So now let's say we wanted to calculate the moment of inertia about this point, I'm going to call that point O, right? So maybe, I don't know, we have like some hinge here and uh, this donut can rotate about or pivot about this point. And so we want to take the moment of inertia about this point O. So to do this, we could, like I said, we can go through and recalculate this 
all uh, using using this integral, but that would be quite difficult. So instead we use parallel axis theorem. So we say that I, so our moment of inertia about point O is equal to our moment of inertia about the center of mass plus M times the distance. So the distance between the center of mass and our point of interest, which in this case is d over 2 squared. So now we can write this as equal to m over 8 d squared plus little d squared plus m d squared over 4. So now let's put that as d squared plus little d squared. We'll make this over 8 so we can add them together. And this ultimately gives you m, and then we have 3d squared plus little d squared over 8. And so now we have the mass moment of inertia about this point O. And so in the following video, I'm going to show you how uh, we now use these calculations for the mass moment of inertia of this donut-like disk. I'm going to show you how you can calculate the equations of motion for this, right, when this, again, donut can now hinge about this point O.